guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a new video. So this is the first time I've taken the car out since I've done the detail and the ceramic coating and it is looking absolutely insane. Minus the insane amount of brake dust that these cars have, the paint is looking phenomenal. I just can't get over the depth and clarity and everything in this. It just looks so, 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 so good. So before we get started on the video, I wanted to mention one thing I have been trying out on boot mode. As you guys know, I am tuned with boot mode stage two. And uh, one of the things that is really cool about boot mode is that you can adjust the burbles. I've been running the off the shelf burbles just to kind of get used to the tune and everything. I don't want to mess with that yet. Uh, but as I drove it more, the more I realized I wanted to kind of tone down the amount of burbles. So what I did now is I turned it completely off. I've been driving with that, trying it out, seeing what I think, and it does sound very, very good. However, I do think uh, I would like a little bit uh, more aggression, a little bit more of the burbles, but not as much as the off the shelf. So I'm going to try the GTS burbles, see what I think. I heard that's kind of very, very subdued. It's the right amount without being over the top. So I'm going to try that out. Let's get into the video. What I actually want to talk about is something that I get asked pretty, pretty often. With any of my cars, people always ask me, hey, I just purchased this car. What are modifications that I should do? So what I wanted to do in this video is go over my top five favorite modifications I've done to my F80 M3 and things that I think anybody that owns one of these cars should look into if they're looking to modify their cars. So the first modification that I want to discuss is suspension. The M suspension, the stock suspension on these cars is great, but the overall ride height is just way too high. I'm going to throw up a picture of how my car looked completely stock. The front end is just massively high. I understand there's a lot of engineering that goes into these suspensions and they ride pretty well. They have the EDC, which is really nice. But at the end of the day, these cars lowered even just a little bit make a huge difference. They just look better. They overall feel better. They handle way better. So for me, I went with the KW V3 coilovers. Absolutely love them. I did an install review and all that. So if you're interested in my complete thoughts on that, go back and check those videos. But lowering these cars is just absolutely one thing I highly recommend doing. Whether you go with full-on coilovers, a sleeve over kit, or just springs, these cars look 30 times better, lowered just a little bit. The next modification that I highly recommend are wheels. These stock competition wheels are very nice, but they are 20 inches. A very, very big wheel for a performance-oriented car like this. And the reason why I wasn't a big fan of them is because of the tire sizing. Very, very thin tires on those 20-inch wheels, and they just completely ruin the ride for me. So stepping down to something like an 18 like myself really, really overall just made the car feel better and obviously handle better. Now, if you guys know me, I went with the Volk TE37 SLs, which is a discontinued TE style. But these are one of the originals, which I absolutely love. They're 18 by 9.5 plus 22 up front. I'm also running a 5 millimeter spacer. And then in the backs are 18 by 11s plus 34. They fill out the rear end very, very well. Tire sizings, a 295 30 18. Now, obviously, there is plenty of different wheels and options to go with. It's just whatever your style is. For me, I like the simplicity of the TE. And for me, TEs have always been a wheel that I've always wanted to put on this car. So when it came down to changing out the wheels and tires for this, I knew I wanted to go with a very, very aggressive setup to make a very kind of track street spec. And the TE37 for me just did it. The third modification I recommend doing on your M2, M3, M4 with the S55 is the crank hub. I have got mine done with the Gintani crank hub. I went over the do's and don'ts, why, how much in a separate video. I also did a whole video on mine getting done at Auto Couture. But I highly recommend doing this simply because of my experience. Now, personally, I didn't have any issues with my stock crank hub. I wasn't tuned at the time when I did have the stock one in. But when we did remove it, we did find the friction discs were indeed cracked. And that is a good sign that it potentially could happen or has a higher chance of it happening in the future. So I'm very, very glad that I did it. I understand it's not really necessarily a modification, but it definitely is something that I recommend doing, even if you're stock or tuned. You never know what can happen. And personally, I would not want to spend 20 plus thousand dollars on a new motor. I'd rather spend the couple grand on getting the crank hub done with an aftermarket solution. The fourth modification that I recommend doing is an exhaust. The S55, as we all know, is not the best sounding M car motor. However, it most certainly can sound fantastic when you do it right. These motors tend to be very, very raspy. 
I actually owned an E46 M3 with the S54. Super, super raspy motors. I actually embraced the rasps. I enjoyed it. But on the S55, it doesn't sound as good as the S54, at least in my opinion. So adding a proper exhaust on these cars is something I highly recommend. For me personally, I'm running Arm Motorsports resonated catless downpipes, and I'm running a full Ink Customs catback. So I got a resonated single mid pipe uh, with a muffler delete out back. I am running also the Horizon Motorsports carbon fiber exhaust tips, the gloss black ones, and I absolutely love the sound. It's super deep, there's hardly any rasp at all, and it just honestly sounds fantastic. I'm super happy with the sound of it. It sounds like it should, it sounds like a true M car, it has a lot of bass, it has a lot of tone, and it just sounds very, very good. <laughs> Now again, for these cars, there's so many different options to go with, but personally, I wanted to go with a full custom setup because I wanted a specific sound and everything out there that is off the shelf just wasn't for me. So I went the custom route with Ink Customs and got a really, really nice custom made, German made exhaust setup. Last but not least is adding a tune. I understand not everybody wants to tune their S55, their M3s, M4s, M2s, but at the end of the day, I went to stage two 93 performance tune from boot mode and it completely changed this car. They are a lot of fun stock, but going over to a full stage two tune just completely wakes this motor up, wakes the car up. It honestly feels like a supercar. It makes it feel as fast, if not faster than the current M3 generation, the G8X. <laughs> So putting a tune on here and really opening up this motor completely changes this car for the better and I could not recommend tuning your S55 more. So those are my top five modifications to do on your M3s and M4s. I understand these top five may not be for you, but doing these five things completely changed this car for me. These cars stock do look nice, but doing these five modifications takes it to another level. Now, there are so many different ways to go about these five separate modifications that I named. So have fun with it. Do what you want. Who cares what other people are doing? Make it your own and enjoy it. Doing these five modifications alone are the best things that I have done to this car so far. It made me fall in love with the car even more than I already have. And at the end of the day, this is my car. This is what I've done to it, and it's making me enjoy it even more. I smile every single time I walk up to this car. I drive it, I wash it, just look at it. Now, if you guys wanna hear a little bit more detail about these five modifications, I have videos on every single one of them, plus more. So if you wanna find out a little bit more detail on these modifications, or you wanna hear more about them, be sure to check out those videos. But as for this one, that is gonna do it. If you guys have any questions at all, be sure to ask them below. But in the meantime, keep it clean, keep it simple, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.